overclocking is one of the terms you'll hear the most when talking about PC hardware or just PC gaming in general. Yet, people rarely bother to explain just what it is and how it works. So if you're new to the PC hardware scene and want to know what all the fuss is about but are too afraid to ask at this point, this video is for you. In this video, we'll be answering all of the elementary questions you may have regarding overclocking, like what it is, whether it's necessary, what results it can produce, and what the risks involved are. So without any further ado, let's begin. You must have noticed by now that many PC components contain specs that are measured in hertz, megahertz, or gigahertz. These specs represent the clock speeds of these components. For example, if you have an Intel Core i5-9600 CPU, your CPU has a base speed frequency of 3.1 GHz. This is your CPU's base clock speed and it tells you how many cycles that component can perform in a second. The thing is, you can make these components work faster by overclocking them, and this will usually merit better performance. So you can overclock your CPU, GPU, or RAM to make them faster. You can even overclock your monitor to increase the refresh rate, although we really don't recommend ever doing this. So to put it simply, overclocking is a way to improve the performance of certain PC components for free. Now getting better performance basically for free sounds awesome, right? So is there a reason why you would ever not want to do this? Well, yes, a couple of reasons actually. In order to compensate for a higher clock speed, you will need to feed more power into the component. This will increase power consumption, make the component generate more heat, and more importantly, it can do some serious damage. There are a number of risks involved with overclocking and we'll get to them later. But does this mean you should never overclock? That's not really the answer either. Context is the most important thing here, and understanding just how much extra performance you can squeeze out when overclocking clocking. As things stand, consumer PCs are more powerful than ever and have been designed to live up to the demands of high-end gaming, rendering, and video editing. So if your PC has a decent spec sheet, most importantly a modern CPU and a dedicated GPU, then you won't be getting much from overclocking. You'll get a slightly higher FPS, sure, but the results will hardly be worth the effort and the risk. So when should you overclock? We'd say that overclocking is definitely worth it if you're dealing with somewhat dated components. Components. They don't necessarily have to be outdated, just not brand new. In this case, overclocking to get that extra bit of performance out of the CPU or the GPU can make the difference between a game being choppy and playable. This of course depends on what the PC in question will be used for, but we'll be focusing on gaming for now since that is what we're here for. The game you're interested in running will also play a large role in how effective overclocking will be for you. Some games are CPU centric, others are GPU centric. Overclocking the CPU will not really help with GPU-centric games and vice versa. As a side note, we should mention that overclocking a CPU will always provide an incremental boost in a CPU's performance, but that this isn't the case with GPUs. The results from GPU overclocking are unpredictable and require a lot of trial and error. So the bottom line is this. Overclocking isn't necessary, but it is a good way to get some extra mileage out of dated components that you just aren't in a situation to replace with newer ones. Now, the art of overclocking is shrouded in words of warning and stories of CPUs being fried to kingdom come. Seriously, who hasn't seen a picture of a PC spontaneously catching fire? But it's important to keep in mind that these are the extreme cases and not the norm. Sure, the risk is inherent, after all, you are pushing the base factory settings which have been deemed by the manufacturer as safe beyond these safe boundaries. But manufacturers are more often than not overly cautious when assigning these safe settings. And this is completely understandable. They don't want to be on the receiving end of complaints and refund demands from a horde of belligerent consumers whose CPUs and GPUs have failed due to overheating. And you don't want your CPU or GPU to randomly die on you either. All in all, it's not a bad practice on a manufacturer's part. But the fact remains that there is definitely some wiggle room between factory setting and unsafe setting. So while the risks are there, they're also quite overstated. Of course, you should always make sure to do your research before tinkering with any PC component, but don't let the fear of irreversibly damaging your PC hold you back. After all, PCs and components come with failsafes, so your PC will much sooner crash and restart than, you know, catch fire. 
So now that we've seen the risks and the benefits of overclocking, let's summarize. Should you overclock? If your hardware can handle it, then there's no reason not to try it so long as you're careful with it. Keep in mind though that there is an if here, since not all CPUs and motherboard chipsets support overclocking in the first place. Also, you want to make sure that you have a good CPU cooler that can handle the increased temperature. Stock coolers are rarely good enough for this, so right off the bat this means that overclocking isn't always entirely free since you'll need an aftermarket cooler in most cases. What's more, having a pair of case-mounted fans can really go a long way in making the airflow in your case much better and less taxing on hardware. We've left a link to our video on case-mounted fans in the description, so check it out if your PC doesn't have any of these yet. And finally, remember that overclocking won't always give you the same benefits. The actual performance increase will depend on your hardware and the games you want to play. In any case, you won't know whether it's the thing for you until you try. There are lots of guides and tutorials online, so make sure to do your research beforehand to keep it safe. And that about does it for this video. We hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did and also consider sharing it if this is something you think your friends ought to know. Also, we upload new videos like this one regularly and the best way to make sure you don't miss any is by clicking on that bell icon. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.